Let's start with the camera of Pixel 7 Pro. Pixel 7 Pro features triple camera modules, a main module, an ultra wide module and a zoom module. And on the front there is a selfie module. Now ultra wide module goes from 17 mm on the Pixel 6 Pro to 14 mm on the Pixel 7 Pro. Plus now the ultra wide module features autofocus so it can be used for macro mode photos. The main module is the same 50 megapixel module from the Pixel 6 Pro but now the center portion of this 50 megapixel module can be used as a 2x zoom module. The periscope zoom goes from 4x to 5x and now the center portion of this periscope zoom module can be used as 10x zoom module. All the modules on Pixel 7 Pro can shoot in 4K 60 and all the modules on Pixel 7 Pro can also shoot 4K 30 in 10-bit HDR, HLG files. The autofocus needs to make a return on Pixel 8 Pro because right now the selfies from Pixel 7 Pro are fuzzy, soft, out of focus and the details are missing. I always look like the foreground blur and the background looks perfectly sharp. The skin tones and dynamic range processing is really really good but what's the point if details are missing and I look like the foreground blur? And what is the point of providing 4K 30 and 4K 60 HDR videos if my face is gonna be out of focus anyway? This is the 4K 30 main module video sample from iPhone 14 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro. On the Pixel 7 Pro, I'm using the speech enhancement feature. On the iPhone, it is just a plain video. Now you look at the colors and dynamic range processing. Now from the smartphone screens, iPhone looks better. It looks better exposed with better dynamic range, better colors, in focus, sharper. The audio quality may be the only thing where Pixel will win. Besides that, the video quality just looks awesome on iPhone's selfie camera. Can you believe the cinematic video of the iPhone 14 Pro from the front facing module in 24 frames per second is better than the full HD video of Pixel 7 Pro from the main module? The cinematic mode on iPhone 14 Pro is just so good. You can shoot in 4K 24 and 30 and you can also use the 3x zoom module for shooting cinematic videos. The image sensor of iPhone is slightly larger than Pixel's image sensor and the lens on the iPhone is slightly wider. So you see more background blur on the iPhone photos whereas Pixel can focus more closely. iPhone can shoot full high resolution 48 megapixel Pro RAW files and it preserves all the computational data like the dynamic range processing and white balance correction. Now Pixel is the only smartphone that can switch lenses in 4K 60 without cutting the video and that's pretty cool. The iPhone viewfinder is very colorful bright with live HDR compositing and the transition of different modules on the iPhone is flawless. Whereas the transition of different modules on Pixel is not that snappy, not that flawless, but Pixel shows three sliders, exposure slider, shadow slider and white balance slider. Now both the sensor are decently big so they can use the center portion of their sensor as a 2x crop. The general photos from both the cameras, Pixel and iPhone are just great. Photos are awesome. 10 on 10, A1, flagship photos. The main difference is the image processing. The pixel image processing is a bit subtle with neutral colors, softer contrast, impeccable dynamic range, and slightly darker exposure. Whereas the iPhone image processing is a bit warm with vibrant colors, brighter exposure, still good dynamic range, and deeper contrast. Pixel always produces the white balance that is more natural to the scene, closer to reality, whereas iPhone produces arguably a bit more correct white balance but on the pixel you have the white balance slider so you can change the white balance the night mode is excellent from both the flagship phones both of them perform really really nice the zoom module on both the flagship phones is different iphone has the 3x zoom module pixel has the 5x periscope zoom module at 3x iphone wins at 5x pixel wins at 10x pixel wins this is the side-by-side -side 4K30 main module video sample from the iPhone 14 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro. Look at the colors, look at the dynamic range processing, look at the background blur. Both the sensors are decently sized, so, so you can see decent amount of background blur going on. Listen to the audio quality too. If the video quality on Pixel 7 Pro is 80-90% to 90 up there with the iPhone 14 Pro, Pixel 7 Pro is the best camera on a smartphone you can get. I said it. The photos from Pixel 7 Pro are excellent. Photos are just awesome. Photos are great. 
10 on 10 flagship photos. The in general pixel image processing is just excellent. It is very subtle and it's very very advanced. The pixel image processing involves neutral colors, softer contrast, impeccable dynamic range, slightly darker exposure and the slightly cooler look of pixel photos. The camera quality is not an issue on Pixel 7 Pro. It is the best camera for taking photos you can get. Now moving on to the design and display on Pixel 7 Pro. The construction of Pixel 7 Pro involves aluminium frame and Victus glass and the aluminium frame wraps around the camera modules and in this white color with Google branding on the center, Pixel 7 Pro looks really really good. In short in this white color it looks very very sexy and it looks very very premium and in hand feel is also super premium. It is not as premium as iPhone 14 Pro though. iPhone 14 Pro features stainless steel frame that is a bit more premium feeling than aluminium frame on the Pixel 7 Pro. But in general the build quality on Pixel 7 Pro is very very good. Roll over the Pixel 7 Pro on the front there is a 6.8 Quad HD 120Hz OLED display. This is a very good display. It is super sharp, super smooth and super responsive. It is super color accurate and it features color calibration controls. The brightness on Pixel 7 Pro is also really good. It can go up to 1000 nits of max brightness and 1500 nits of peak brightness. It's a very good brightness. But it is using the rigid AMOLED panel. It is very similar to the S21 Ultra. It needs to switch to the flexible OLED panel that is present on the iPhone 14 Pro and S23 Ultra. On top of that it needs to start using the LTPO refresh rate that can vary from 1Hz to 120Hz or on the Pixel 7 Pro it can vary from 10Hz to 120Hz. Using this LTPO refresh rate will save battery life and it also needs to add the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. Right now it is using the optical fingerprint scanner and it's fine but it's not that reliable, it's not that fast and it does not not work with your sweaty fingers. The display on Pixel 7 Pro is good. It is very good. It's just not the best. It is the third best display on a smartphone. Number one goes to the S22 Ultra, number two iPhone 14 Pro and the third goes to Pixel 7 Pro. In terms of performance, Pixel 7 Pro features Tensor G2 chip paired with 120Hz display, 12 gigs of RAM and amazing haptic motor equals awesome user experience. But Gaming needs some real improvements. It needs improvements in GPU and some improvements in CPU. I don't play games but a lot of the audience do. The performance is butter on Pixel 7 Pro but if you care about gaming, iPhone 14 Pro, S23 Ultra are better. The best part of Pixel 7 Pro after the camera is probably the haptic motor. This haptic motor is just excellent. And Google Pixel uses this haptic motor everywhere. App drawer, notification panel, keyboard, camera, clock, recent apps, everywhere. The battery life on Pixel 7 Pro is really really good. It's not great. The battery life on Pixel 7 Pro can be great if Pixel uses the LTPO refresh rate that can vary from 10 Hz to 120 Hz. Now Pixel 7 Pro does not go below the 60 Hz refresh rate. I don't know why. Even in still photos, it stays at 60 Hz or 120 Hz. So it is not using the LTPO technology. But still, using Pixel 7 Pro for day to day use, I can still get 8 hours of screen time with no issues. That is really good battery life.